Hi everyone, we're the Engineering Chicks. I'm Ashley and I'm here with Emily and today we're going to talk about general methods for generating random variants. So the first method we're going to talk about is the inversion of the CDF. So you can generate random variants by first generating random R variables and then plugging those into an inverse CDF function. Um, and then the derivation of the inverse CDF of the exponential distribution is as follows. Um, so this is an example that we have in the book. So you start here with the exponential distribution. Um, you replace x with u and you integrate from 0 to x. Um, and that will give you 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. And then you take that and you just set it equal to r. Um, which is going to be your random variables. So then you solve this equation here for x, so you get the inverse of the random variables is negative 1 over lambda to the natural log of r, um, once you solve for r. And then in the book they set a value for lambda which is just one third, so when you plug that in here you get x is equal to negative 3 natural log of r. And then here's where you generate your random variables r. So if your random r is 0.1367, then your random variance x is 5.97. So a second method for generating random variance is the envelope rejection method. Um, and this method is used when the inverse CDF does not have a closed form um, like we did in the last example. So the goal here is to use two distributions, h and g, um, just say the exponential and the folded normal, for example, um, to generate variates and then to keep only the variates that have exactly the desired distribution density f, say the normal distribution. Um, and then any variates that don't have the distribution f are discarded and not used. And you use this proportion here, h of y over g of y, to find the probability of choosing variates. And these y's are random numbers that you generate. Um, then just as a note, g majorizes h, and you generate two random numbers and use this proportion to decide if you keep them or not. And this method is generally more inefficient compared to the inversion method because you have to generate more random variables and um, just use more steps to get to the final answer. So here is an example of, that we did in MATLAB of using the envelope method. And we're using the folded normal. So we have 2,000 iterations. We have a mu and a lambda. And then our g is our standard normal um, density function, or distribution function. And then h is our exponential function. And so here is where we're generating all of the random variables and then using this proportion to decide if we keep them or not. Um, so R1 is a random variable, and R2 is also um, used here. And so here we have these if statements. And depending on the values of R1, you decide if you're keeping that variant or not. And so if you keep it, you add to the count. And once you get to the very end, and this runs as many iterations, you have um, a histogram that has a distribution of the normal function. or um, the normal distribution. So all of your variates are counted up and then you store it in a matrix and when you make a histogram, that histogram has this normal distribution. So this right here is the distribution of the random variates. Okay, so now um, another method to generate random variates. So this is using a ratio of uniform, you know, ratio of uniforms method. This is what this method is. So we can create a new random variable from two independent uniform distribution distributed random variables. So an example of that would be um, you have one uniformly distributed um, distribution u and then you have another one v and um, you've got a new random variable that can be formed out of this ratio which would be x which equals v over u. So then kind of the challenging part of this would be like getting the distribution of x. So this theorem kind of uh, explains how you would go about proving what the dis distribution of x would be. And so um, in this theorem, it selects a, U, a uv to be uniformly distributed over a subset of a rectangle. 
And so the theorem states, let H be any non-negative function um, with integration of x on support of h. And then h of x dx has to be less than uh, infinity. And then you define your um, region, which is c. And so as you can see, they defined it as this right here on support of h. And then you let your point u comma v be uniformly distributed over your region c. And then you let x equals v over u. And so then the probability density function of x is h of x over uh, the integration of negative infinity to infinity of h of x. And so here is that proof continued. And um, as you can see, it just goes through. It starts with the joint density of u and v. And it displays that as a to the negative 1. And then on support of c, where a is the double integration of c of on the support of c of du dv. And then um, you then in put in the x equals v u part of it. And um, you get that the joint density of u and x is this function right here. Or not function, but this um, statement. And then it's on support of uh, c. So then it follows the, that the marginal density of x is h of x over 2a. And so since f is a density, we must have 1 equaling to that. And so when you rearrange and solve for that, you say, see that um, f sub x of, x of f of x is equal to h of x over the integration of negative infinity to infinity of h of x dx. So then um, this theorem leads to a method of generating random variates with the density proportional to h. And um, so we enclose a region C within another region D, which is rectangular, and we generate points uniformly with D. And if the, the point falls into region C, it is accepted, so the VU ratio would be an acceptance. Otherwise, it's rejected. So in general, kind of just uh, recapping the steps, you define your region C, and then you define your region D, and then you derive your algorithm to generate a point UB uniformly over region D. And if the point that you randomly uh, generated uniformly over D, if that point also falls within region C, you accept that ratio which um, leads to an acceptance ratio or a basically it's the probability of acceptance. And so that's just kind of our third and final uh, method of generating random variates. Um, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed.